What's good, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. This is your boy, Joe G, and we are talking about health and wealth, because really in today's times, health is wealth, because most people aren't in shape, most people aren't healthy, most people are on prescription drugs, most people are obese, 76% of the United States is overweight. So on one side, right here, I have three pictures of myself when I was... 278 pounds. On the top left was my fattest. I was eating a bunch of Percocets every single day. I had a minor drug addiction, $50 a day, alcohol problem, and I liked playing craps. On the bottom left was when I first got to Las Vegas after college, maybe 2008. And this is what 100 pounds of weight loss looks like, and we're not ashamed of it. You know what I'm saying? So on the bottom left is when I had a problem with Jack Daniels, and I liked eating Mexican food. Obviously, this is living in Las Vegas, so I thought it would be great to wear a sombrero out. And you can see I have a big gold ring here. I have alopecia or whatever that is, rosacea. I'm always, my face is always red. And if you just look here, I'm wearing baggy clothes. You know what I'm saying? You can see my calves are thick. Nothing is tucked in, and this is probably a 44 size pant. And then on the left side here, this was back in the day, and I'm there's two people here that I'm not showing, but I was super fat. I remember how twisted I was, and this was like this picture and this picture were basically like in the same probably year. This is my fattest, probably a little fatter on the top with the bags. So, this episode. 10 ways to lose weight for beginners. 10 ways to lose weight for beginners. So as you can tell, losing weight isn't always easy, but it doesn't have to be hard either. When I first started losing, I fa failed a couple times because I wasn't knowledgeable. I didn't understand the nutrition part and I thought you could outwork a bad diet. And to a certain extent you can. Once you get your shit under control, I'm gonna teach you in the future that you. You can probably, not you probably, you can eat ice cream. You can do whatever you want every day as long as you put the work in. You just have to get there. So losing weight can take time. It depends on how long you've been fat for. For me, I was fat for 29 years. So it roughly took, honestly, it didn't take that long. It probably took, took about three years to get into like really, really decent shape. Like where I felt like I could take my shirt off and like have sex with women and not feel like, you know, fucking self-ashamed or whatever that's called. So don't worry. I mean, there's plenty of ways to shed pounds, and that's what we're going to talk about. And even if it takes longer than you want to, you have to realize that the fact that you're even thinking about it, that's where it all starts. That's where it all starts is thinking about changing because as humans, you cannot be sitting still all the time. You know what I mean? I've lived in three different cities. I'm thinking about moving to another city. I just moved here, and maybe I have a problem, but I love the adventure, right? So number one, if you really want to start losing weight, you have to create a journal or a diary. And the reason why I put the word diary in is because maybe you wanna write down your feelings in there as well. So today I weighed 278 pounds. My poop was huge. I woke up tired. You know, my throat hurts. You write that all down. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna tell you, oh, also you could put how long you sleep in there for every day. You know what I mean? And this is going to help you start to become accountable for what you've eaten, how long you've slept, how much water, how, much, how long you worked out, how long you walked. And when I say a journal, you don't need to like kill yourself over this. You just need to put 8 a.m. woke up, 10 a.m. took a poop, ate breakfast at this time. What did you eat? And that's the start. Number two. So something that I found super helpful when I had my bodybuilding coaches and I never actually did bodybuilding. I just wanted to learn how to get buff and lose weight. Take pictures once a week at the same time every week in the same room in the same light wearing the same pair of shorts or underwear. Take pictures of yourself. And every week you're going to check in with those pictures. You're going to take new pictures. You're going to look at the old pictures. Maybe we even have your significant other or your, I don't know, teammate or something like that. Whoever's on your, you know, helping you. Uh, if you're on a sports team or whatever, you have them look at the pictures in a, in a non-judgmental way and you have them see where you've made progress. Are your legs bigger? Is your waist smaller? Are your arms bigger? Looking back at pictures of myself when I was overweight is tough. That's why I put it here. I think it's important 
to have a couple pictures of when you were fat because that is the old you and you're going to take some of that trauma with you but this is the new you that we are creating so i have like literally those i have those three pictures and i might have one or two real pictures like from back in the day and those are the few pictures that i keep to remind myself of how far i've come and really there's nothing to be ashamed of when i first started i started a youtube page years and years ago with fucking fat loss and weight loss and i didn't know if i was going to keep it off you know what i mean i didn't have any faith in myself part of this game is having faith in yourself most people hide their weaknesses when you're obese you're wearing it when you're fat you're wearing it i can see in those pictures how unhappy i was i don't remember I vaguely remember, to be honest with you, but I could see it. So I don't need to remember. I don't even want to remember. You know what I'm saying? But I see that that was the old. And when you're fat, that's your burden, man. That ruins your life. You can't get pussy. You can't sleep well. You're hungry. Your whole life revolves just around eating. And if you're considering starting a weight loss journey out there, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it because your life will change. And taking pictures, it's going to keep you motivated and accountable. So number three, and this is something that is obviously another easy thing. Losing weight, like I said, is not easy in the work that you have to do, but in the concepts that you have to understand, it's very easy. It's very easy, these concepts. Less is more. So counting calories. In other videos, I'll be going over what is called the Sterling Passmore equation. This is essentially an equation, a math equation. I've used for the past 10 years to help me gauge what my correct calorie consumption is for depending on the activity that I'm doing or what my goal is for that certain amount of months. So am I losing weight? Am I maintaining? Am I building muscle? Well, you'll see from tuning into this channel that we're never really maintaining. We're always just trying to get better. You know what I mean? Whether we're doing new activities, new modalities, whatever, we're figuring out. So what we use is Sterling Passmore, and we'll go into other, other videos, but essentially you take a number, you take your calorie expenditure, and you multiply those two numbers together, and then we'll get our calorie intake depending on what our activity level is and how many calories it takes per pound to maintain a pound of lean body mass. Number four, another easy one for me, super hard though to implement a lot of the time, no alcohol. So if you really want to get peeled, you cannot, cannot be wasting calories on booze, beer, liquor. I don't care if you have a trainer right now. They're dumb if they tell you that you can have clear spirits. Booze is going to make you bloated. So if you're serious about losing weight, you need to cut out alcohol completely. Once you're in shape, you can pick and choose, like I said, spots. Maybe you're hanging out with some friends and you don't want to be a fucking weirdo. So you order a bacon cheeseburger, which is also in the diet at one point. And then you get yourself a couple, you know, old fashions, Manhattans, if you like vermouth, things like that. But you got to start strict. And booze is packed with empty calories and it'll add pounds to your waistline. And beer, especially beer, it's not fattening per se. It does have a lot of calories, but everyone knows about the dreaded drunchies. And if you don't, the drunchies are the same as the munchies. When you eat, when you drink a lot of beer and you get crunk, you just want to crush cheeseburgers and pancakes and hamburgers and chicken nuggets, and you just want to drink soda at the end of the night. You know what I'm saying? And it's weird because that stuff makes you feel better in the morning, but it, make, it kills you long term. So stop drinking alcohol, people. Number five, exercise every single day. If you're obese, God bless your soul, you're here, you've made it. You just need to start walking, I'm telling you, every single day. I'm 39 years old, I turned 39 years old last month. My knees are just starting to hurt, probably from being 100 pounds overweight for 29 years. So yes, I do run once in a while. When I start to see the love handles getting thicker, I go for a run, but 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm trying to walk two and a half to four miles a day. It's not that crazy. Your ancestors used to do that just to get a, you know, a lizard to eat. So walking is inherently human. Your ancestors walked. Our ancestors didn't have CrossFit. They didn't have fucking Pilates. They didn't have all this shit. All they had was walking. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we're designed to do. And you'll feel it after a while when you walk you'll get into a fat burning zone. Mr. Olympia, the most muscular human being arguably on the planet. And I'll even go back to Ronnie Coleman. All the Mr. Olympias, 
when they do cardio, when you watch those videos, they're walking on a treadmill at three miles an hour. Not the number all of them, but majority of them are walking at three miles an hour at a three incline like this. Low and slow, you're cooking the fat off. It's barbecue. So a little bit of exercise is going to go a long way. And it's a long-term investment into ourselves, right? Everyone's busy making money, trying to be this, show off their wah-wahs. Why don't you invest in yourself? Why don't you invest in your health? Because I know a lot of people my age who look like they're in their 40s, look like they're in their 50s. I guess I almost am in my 40s. But if you want to be healthy in your 40s, if you want to maintain a, a muscle mass, you need to exercise every day some level at least at least an hour a day 30 minutes is like a precursor to the hour so i'm not saying you need to join a gym or start running marathons just walk my main source is walking and that's how i lost 100 pounds you know i did do yoga i did teach pilates i did do a lot of things to dial it in but to lose the bulk of the weight just walking walking and eating correctly number six Create a routine that works for you. So when I say this, it's a journey. It's a lifestyle. You might have to quit your job. I know that sounds crazy, but your family's not gonna understand. Your significant other's not gonna understand. Your friends are definitely not gonna understand. If you wanna be in shape, you really, really need to create a routine that works for you. So for years and years and years, when I lived in Las Vegas, after I left the call center, I would wake up every single day, probably about for four years, and I would go right to yoga. And then I was so sick at one point that I went to yoga twice a day for like a year. Sick in the head, you know what I'm saying? And I knew I needed to fix it, and that was the only way I knew how to do it. So now I've moved to Miami, and my new routine is different. So you have to have a routine that can work for you. So in the morning, I wake up, and then I walk two blocks to the beach, and I go swimming. And I swim, 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 swim. I'm out of breath like I am right now talking to you beautiful people namaste and if you're getting any value out of this we're at number six please hit the like button but more importantly please subscribe so we can build up the channel now this might sound basic but what time do you plan on waking up that's the first part of your routine I typically wake up between 7 and 7 30 without an alarm clock Sometimes I wake up earlier, sometimes I wake up later, 90% of the time it's in that time zone. Even if I've had a drink on a Friday night and a bacon double cheeseburger with french fries and barbecue sauce. Number two, if you're going to eat when you wake up, are you going to work out? Not if you're going to eat, are you going to eat? Do you eat when you wake up or do you go fasted cardio, fasted exercise, fasted heart hit? I typically don't eat until like midway through the day. I do coffee for hours and hours and hours. And I love coffee, coffee and water. And then maybe I'll open up a small window between like 3 p.m. and 8 p.m., 7 p.m. where I'll just eat whatever I want. And I've trained myself that, you know, I can get in 1,500, 2,000 calories in four or five hours and then I can poop it out and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good with that. So that's the routine that works for me. And, you know, what time do I go to sleep? I go to sleep very early. Like I said, I'm an old man. So 9 o'clock, 9.30, if I can go to bed when the sun goes down, sun's going down later now. But usually I like to go to bed when the sun goes down because from my time drinking alcohol, nothing happens good after midnight. And that's pretty basic, right? You start with what time you wake up, and then you start with what time you go to bed, and then you fill in the rest probably eight hours of work. You got lunch. You got to take a shower. You can be super detailed. The more detailed you are, probably the more successful you're going to be. I'm not a guy who likes a lot of detail. So as long as I wake up and go to sleep and I thank the universe for being there every day, I'm good to go. So number seven, a lot of people talk about fat burners, testosterone supplements, weight gainers, protein shakes. Food is the best supplement. Number seven, food is the best supplement. You don't need to buy any supplements in the store as far as I'm concerned. You could buy vitamin D, you could do a multivitamin, fish oils, but as far as like creatine and fucking shit like that, nope, you don't even need it. You know what I mean? Real food works best. So you want some creatine, you want some vitamin D, you want all that shit, go eat a steak. You know, eat meat. I barely eat any vegetables. If I do, I eat some fruits after I work out. That's when I like to carb up and we'll talk about carb timing and cycling and things like that and when you push nutrients into your muscles 
I'm here to help you be successful. I swear to you, I am here for you to be successful. I've already figured this out. I'm on to the next thing, you know, and I don't even know what that is, to be honest with you. Part of it is this. So I'm hoping that I'm helping you get some value, maybe being the light to some of you out there. And then hopefully we, we can all be on this journey together. If I can bring some people up with me, maybe we could push through some roadblocks forward. So also, like I said, eat meat, but also cut out soda. Drink water or seltzer, iced tea, coffee. When I first started losing weight, I was drinking Diet Coke, maybe like a six pack every day, yo. This shit was crazy. That shit is horrendous for you. That shit will give you cancer aids. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as you can switch from Diet Cokes, Diet Sodas, Diet Orange, Sunkiss, which were fire, Diet Mountain Dew, which makes your throat burn, switch over to seltzers. I mean, I literally spend... I probably spend $30 or $40 of seltzer, two liters a month. You know what I mean? I'm just crushing seltzer more than water. Coffee, seltzer, water. That's all you need as far as liquid is concerned. And then, you know, avoid soda. Just avoid soda. That's all I'm saying. Drink water. When I say drink water, that kind of goes with number seven. But number eight, drink plenty of water. Water is the essence of life. When I was a kid, I got arrested for smoking a joint. I got sent to Utah, and in Utah, we had water buckets or whatever, like those gas containers. And if you spilled a drop, you would have to repeat, water is the essence of life. Water is the essence of life. So drinking water is essential for weight loss. And there's no magic number, but when it comes to how much water you should drink each day, I'm just telling you to try to reach a gallon. Drink as much water as you can. There's really no limit. Like some people have said, to me, oh, you're drinking too much water. What the fuck does that even mean? Water flushes out your toxins. It boosts our metabolism. It makes the pipes cleaner. You know what I mean? And it helps fill us up if we have a couple glasses before meals. For example, when I wrestled in high school, my coach would make me drink two eight-ounce glasses of water before I ate. Why? He was dumb. But, you know... I was fat. So his theory, instead of working out, was to have me eat less. And you're going to know on this channel that we, we love working out. We love being active. We love being, we're at a standing desk. Okay? But we also know that we can eat whatever we want because food does not own us. We control our destinies. We control our bodies. We control our minds. We control our thoughts. And that leads us to number nine. Have a positive mental attitude. Have a positive mental attitude. I have a best friend, one of them, and he is inherently a negative human being. He has some sicknesses, he has some diseases, but his main thing every day, his, his ethos is negative. Something we talked about in multiple videos here is the first thing that I do when I wake up, the first thing that I implore everyone to do when they wake up is you're staring at that ceiling and you just open your eyes and you say, thank you, universe, for allowing me to open my eyes today. And then I usually, or I used to say the first thing that I was thankful for, when I had my beloved Snoopy dog, I would thank the universe for her. Now I say, thank you, universe, for allowing me to open my eyes today allow me to help some people on the internet. And I know that sounds crazy, but that's what I feel like I'm doing. So losing weight is a process and it requires both physical and mental effort. Having a positive mental attitude is essential for success. And I promise you that if you don't have a positive attitude, you'll fail. You will fucking fail. You will fail. Just like all those pictures right here, the amount of times that I tried losing weight, you will fail. So if you're not stern but fair with yourself, you're going to fail. But I assure you that you have to be nice to yourself. Every time that you have a negative thought, you have to counteract it with a positive thought. You have to end your day net positive, positive thoughts. And what does that mean? That means that 51% of your day was spent having positive thoughts. You just need to get that 1% majority. And number 10, last but not least, keep yourself accountable by checking in. 
This goes with number one. It goes with all the other numbers we talked about. Checking in on your progress is a great way to stay motivated. It's also a great way to keep you accountable because there's going to be a couple of weeks. There might even be a couple of months where life gets in there and you don't hit progress goals. You know, and honestly, I talked about measuring your waist, your legs, your biceps. The progress is really in here. You'll see it in the mirror, but whatever's in here is directly going to show in your mirror, okay? So keep a positive mental attitude. If you guys need any help, tune in, subscribe, but feel free to email me or comment or do whatever you want. It's your life. We do live in America, which is still a free country to an extent, and do whatever you want. Be whoever you want. That's what the Matrix doesn't want you to understand. I worked in a call center. And I'm very fortunate to live the life that I do. And it's not always pleasant. But life's not always pleasant. And there's tons of people who fought for us to be able to sit here and stare into a computer screen and talk to other people on the internet. And they didn't even know that that was a technology that was going to happen. So I wish you the best of luck on your weight loss journey. See you soon.